Dear President Radev of Bulgaria, dear Mr. Valls, former Prime Minister of France, Ambassador Katz, Senior Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Israel, dignitaries, it is my honor to invite Abraham Foxman, a longtime leader of the ADL, awarded for lifetime achievements at the 2015 Global Forum for Combating Antisemitism, currently head of the Center for the Study of Antisemitism at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, to chair our lunch. Mr. Foxman. So, Rhyme Tov, <clears throat> good afternoon. I need to begin with a personal confession. I stand as I look out, and on one hand, I am so pleased, so encouraged by your presence, by the fact that you're here to stand together as a community, as a people from all parts of the world, joined by the finest of world leadership, President of Bulgaria, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister of France, so many ambassadors, so many wonderful people <clears throat> who stopped whatever was their endeavor, whatever they were doing, to come here. Not only to stand in solidarity, but to ponder, to question, to probe how we fight this disease. And that's the good news. The bad news is that how many more, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, now the sixth, how many more global conferences will we have to call to find a way to eradicate, to combat, to do away. So I thank you from both perspectives for the warmth, for the commitment that your presence gives me, and also for the fact that I guess you're as frustrated and as anxious as I am, that this is what brings us together. When Ron Yacobi and Akiva Tor called me to ask me to introduce President Radden, two questions came to mind. Why me? Why me to introduce the President of Bulgaria? And a little bit more of a serious question. Why President of Bulgaria at a global conference of, to combat anti-Semitism? Are they guilty of something more than why they? The first question was a lot easier for me to answer. As a child survivor of the Holocaust, saved by a Christian Polish nanny, to whom I never had an opportunity to say, Dziękuję, thank you. Thank you for risking your life to save mine. And so many years ago, I resolved and volunteered to seek out opportunities to embrace, publicly celebrate those who showed that act supreme humanity and save Jews. And Bulgaria, Bulgaria stands out in that category so magnificently. Mr. President, I don't know if you're aware, but I am probably an unregistered lobbyist for the Republic of Bulgaria, for I do not miss an opportunity to stand up, to say that thank you, both individually, symbolically, but also to the extent that I have a voice from our community. Bulgaria, 
Bulgaria is a country that distinguished itself as a leader among nations in protecting its Jewish community from the Nazi death machine at the darkest moment of Jewish history. During World War II, the Bulgarian people, the Orthodox Church, King Boris III, courageously resisted Nazi efforts to deport Bulgarian Jews to death camps, saving the nation's 48,000 Jews. And if you're ever depressed, I recommend to you, and now one can download it, to read the minutes of the Synod of the Bulgarian Church, the debates, the discussions, which led to their religious, courageous leadership and voice. It's a lesson we can teach over and over again and is so necessary. And as to the second question, why Bulgaria at the conference? To me, it's also very obvious. In all the years of our efforts to combat or try to eliminate or minimize anti-Semitism, all the methods we tried and are trying did not really show the type of success that we would hope for. Exposing, shaming, and punishing, isolating, condemning, and of course, educating and educating and educating have not achieved the results that we hope to someday achieve. The one the one successful antidote, the one successful vaccine, if you will, is the ability, the courage, the consciousness of people to stand up to say no. Because it's not when all else fails. If that would be the first for good people to stand up to say no to anti-Semitism, to bigotry, to prejudice, that's really the only tool, the only antidote to defeat it, to destroy it, and to annihilate it. In Bulgaria, in that category, Bulgaria is the model. And that's why it is so appropriate that when we come together on this subject, we embrace and we listen to the president of Bulgaria. And so now for my task to introduce you, Mr. President, before being elected president in 2016, Rumen Radev had a distinguished career in military service, including graduating from the Air War College at Maxwell Air Force Base in the United States with a Master of Strategic Studies with honors, and he was the head of the Air Force of his country. Since the election, President Radev has been a supporter of the State of Israel publicly and the Bulgarian Jewish community. Earlier this month, he spoke in Sofia congratulating Israel on its 70th, 70th anniversary and expressing pride for his country's history and respect for the Jewish community. Ladies and gentlemen, it is for me a personal privilege and a great, great honor to introduce to you the President of the Republic of Bulgaria, Radin Radu. Radin, please. Thank you for your trust in advance. As I was served my lunch before speaking, so I appreciate it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to thank you for the privilege and honor of being a guest and speaker in this forum. Being at this high stage, I remember the opening ceremony of the first and for us historical Bulgarian presidency of the Council of the European Union on January 11th this year. 
As a head of state, it was my duty and honor to address the nation and the Union. Elaborating on my very short speech, I faced a huge challenge. How can I embrace 13 centuries of Bulgarian history full of glorious events in just two sentences? It seemed to me as a mission impossible. Then I decided to point out one of the brightest pages in our history, saving the Bulgarian Jews during the darkest period of European history, revealing, <clears throat> revealing the moral strength and humanity of my people. Today, the horror of Holocaust is a history. However, the shadow of anti-Semitism, hatred, continue, continues threatening our societies. I will make a quote. When you hear someone insulting the Jews, pay attention. He is talking about you. These are words of a French philosopher from Martinique. He was not Jewish, but he still had the living memory of the ship's holds full of slaves and the nostalgia for the long lost homeland. To shiver with horror at the thought of anti-Semitism it is not enough that we have heard and read about it. That we have seen the pictures of the bulldozers burying human bodies in dead camps. No, this is not enough. Years ago, Elie Wiesel, who lived through this horror, wrote with despair. Auschwitz did not succeed in curing mankind of racism. Why even this biblical genocide did not help people build an immunity against inhumanity? Is there any chance of success ever? The answer seems clean, clear to me. It is because personal experience of pain and horror disappears with the people who suffer them. The memory of society keeps the evidence in books, pictures, and films that become more distant with every new generation. Memories of what had been experienced fade away as time passed by. Therefore, in order to prevent this virus of anti-Semitism and all other forms of xenophobia, we need to be very sensitive to pain. The hedonistic society of today worships enjoyment. However, it is pain and compassion. It is the emotional culture of suffering that act as an insurance against this horror happening again. In the spring of 1943, in the midst of the Holocaust, Bulgaria saved its Jews. The Orthodox Church, the leading politicians and intellectuals, united their efforts to protect them. Not even one Jew, citizen of Bulgaria, had been deported to the death camps. This bright rebellion of our people against the darkness that had fallen on the whole of Europe, we can explain not only with the courage of the righteous, 
but also with the living memory of the Ottoman yoke. The personal experience of justice is one of the reasons that racial theories crashed into the firm human decency of the Bulgarians at that time. The second reason for the persistent virus of anti-Semitism is the intellectual and cultural backwardness. Anti-Semitism and other forms of xenophobia provide easy explanations for personal and group frustrations. Racism is the snobbery of the poor. It's a quote from Raymond Aron. And this applies to the highest degree to anti-Semitism. In the increasingly polarized world of today, anti-Semitism takes deep roots in the socially disadvantaged groups, including those in Europe. This is why it is worth considering how to cure social disharmony, which facilitates the work of those who preach anti-Semitism. Third, we should mention the anti-Semitism as ideology. This is the moment when ignorance and hatred towards humanity become dressed up as knowledge and create conspiracy theories leading to barbarity. This type of anti-Semitism is created by opportunists who cash in the ignorance, frustrations, and dark emotions of the masses. Sometimes anti-Semitism sneaks even in the official positions of certain states. This point of view is not only a threat to Israel. It is ethically destructive and dangerous for the global peace. I believe we should fight it not only with the arguments of history, but also with the arguments of universal humanism. We should see its, victim, its victims not as persecuted Jews, but as our brothers and sisters. Israel should not only be seen as a state, but also as a sacred land for billions of people all over the world, whose faith has a strong connection to this place. In 1943, the Bulgarians saved their fellow Jewish citizens, but in fact, they also saved themselves. They saved their own corner of civilization. They saved their dignity and may venture. They stood up for the dignity of Europe. The old continent was a scene of unmatched tragedy, the industrial annihilation of people. Bulgaria was also dragged into a situation which did not allow us to protect in the same way the 11,343 Jews from neighboring countries who were not Bulgarian citizens. Today, we, the people of Bulgaria, grief about them and all victims of the Holocaust. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to thank you once again for the honor of being with you today. I consider your invitation as a sign of respect to the Bulgarian people and to my country, a country which has stood against the winds of history which has lived through many tragedies and has won numerous victories, including the one against anti-Semitism during its reign of Europe. Thank you for your attention.